The early Klotz immigrants bear a striking resemblance to today's generations. We all owe our brains and good looks to family patriarch Abraham, who settled in southern Louisiana near Bayou Lafouche, in a place that came to be known as Klotzville. Abraham's first wife died and he married Paula. There they grew sugar cane on a plantation till after the Civil War, where they raised all their children, including Paul. Solomon Paul Klotz and his wife, Edith Gertrude Leach, met in New Orleans in the late 1800s, where he was a medical student at Tulane University and she was a nursing student at Tarot School of Nursing. Edith later changed her name, her middle name, to Vivian, even though it was her mother's name. Fortunately for all of us, Edith more resembled her paternal grandmother, Hannah Chandler Leach. Paul and Edith moved to bustling hamlet in southwest Mississippi called Summit, where he joined the practice of an already established physician and quickly established a reputation as a fine young doctor. The couple later moved to a large Victorian house on Georgia Avenue in Macomb. Edith set about growing a family, giving birth to five sons, Alvin, Chandler, Paul, Lewis, and Lee. Sadly, Lewis died from ungent fever caused by contaminated cow's milk around age two. Dr. Klotz then bought a cow and milked it himself. Alas, there were no girls, but Edith often opened her home to young girls from the orphanage in foster care. Ahead of her time, Edith was one of the first women in Macomb to bob her hair and to ride a bicycle. The youngest child, Lee Lee, enjoyed an idyllic life in Macomb. Drawn to animals even then, he had such pets as a baby alligator and a goat, which pulled a cart around and helped him make money by hauling away the neighbor's garbage. Big Brother Buster also gave him an allowance, a fact that was duly noted in Lee Lee's scrapbook. In high school, Lee was quarterback of the football team and editor of the school newspaper, the Tiger Rags. Young Lee never stood a chance once local belle Aileen Crane set her hat for him. At the end of her senior year in high school, the couple eloped with big brother Chandler and his wife Eugenia as witnesses. Two major milestones occurred in the life of the young couple early in the 1940s. The bombing of Pearl Harbor and the birth of their first child, Carmen Susan Klotz, who joined first cousins Stephanie, Leachy, Carrie, and Paul William. After Pearl Harbor, Lee joined the Navy and served as the ship's photographer aboard the U.S. Hollandia, an aircraft carrier that saw action in the Pacific. The Klotz clan was growing, with young cousins springing up all around, as seen in this holiday scene in the early 1940s. The war finally ended, and Lee returned to Macomb. The young family settled into a house in Edgewood, near the Illinois Central Lake. Although when he returned to Macomb after the war, Lee declared that he did not care if he never left home again. He did make an exception for a trip to Clotsville. Around 1947-48, for a family barbecue. He snapped this photo of Paul and Edith with Carmen, be Carmen between them at center bottom. To Paul's right is his brother Edma and wife Mabel. On the back row from left are Aline, Stephanie, Eugenia, Chandler, and a cousin, Sam Klotz, whose wife is just below him. In 1949, in time for later classification as a baby boomer, Leah Denise Klotz was born to Lee and Aline. Other boomer cousins included Jeannie, Clifford, and Dottie, bringing the total number to nine grandchildren for Dr. and Mrs. Klotz by 1950. The 1950s ushered in an era of peace and prosperity for the country. Lee opened Klotz Studio, and Aline worked there with him, coloring the portraits he took with oil paints. Lee and Aline made a musical dream come true with the purchase of, of a Hammond chord organ. 
which landed them a gig on WLBT-TV in Jackson. It was a wild decade across the country, but no wilder anywhere but in our own backyard. Lee's passion for animals peaked in this decade. Nobody knew what creature they would next see at the Clocks Manor. Pekingese to poodles, a baby fox, an ocelot, a spider monkey, and a chimpanzee. About this time, the biggest monkey of all came to live at 119 Harmony Lane. Life was never the same. No, life was never the same. The family continued to gather for special occasions, holidays, and weddings. By 1965, Lee and Aline had three grandchildren, Coulter, Ashley, and Erica. By 1984, Leah had increased the flock by two more daughters, Mandy and Allie. And in 1998, twins were born to Lee Jr. and Becky, Yuki and Hunter. Finally, a grandson. And then the great-grandchildren started coming along, courtesy, courtesy of Coulter and Erica. Including the latest addition this summer, Erica's daughter, Annabella. Congratulations, Daddy. Pop? Uncle Lee? Job well done. Happy 90th birthday! Just a little early. Just give me that countryside. New York is where I'd rather stay. I get allergic smelling hay. I just adore a penthouse view. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. The chores. The stores. Fresh air. Times Square. You are my wife. Goodbye. 